in Unit 5, we will familiarize ourselves with the verbalization of a topic. This unit is divided into three sections. Section 1. Topic and Title This chapter is entitled Identification of a Topic. Therefore, the emphasis is put on the term topic. The topic is the subject matter of your research. However, it has to be differentiated between the topic and the title of a research project. The title is the headline that appears on the cover page or at the top of the written documentation of a research project. Both terms can interact in a number of ways. Basically, there are three combinations. In most cases, topic and title of a research project will be identical. For example, project finance of windmill farms under the German Renewable Energy Act, EEG, could be simultaneously the title and the topic of a research project. However, there are two combinations in which topic and title are not identical. First, only the title is named without explicitly stating the topic. An example of a title could be EEG, blown in the wind. Here, the recipient is not informed about the underlying topic. Please note that titles for published research output might be sometimes formulated in a provoking or an entertaining way. The reason for this can be that the authors want to stick out of the bulk of publications. Anyhow, this is not common or even advisable for student research projects. Second, a subtitle can state or explain the topic. Again, an example of a title could be EEG, Blown in the Wind. Additionally, the topic could be stated in the subtitle, Project Finance of Windmill Farms under the German Renewable Energy Act, EEG. Please keep in mind that the majority of academic research projects have a title that is identical with the topic. Let's have another example of applying the logic. Starting point is the title of a given research project. The sample title of our fictitious research project is Are Cocos Nuts? Obviously, this title needs a clarification with respect to the topic. The topic is Contingent Convertible Bank Bonds in the Context of Regulatory Capital Requirements. Furthermore, the topic needs an interpretation. We will explain the technique of interpretation in one of the following chapters. Meanwhile, we decide to apply an approach that focuses on the causal connection between COCOs and regulatory capital requirements. Now we can start to define a provisional research problem. The key issue of the research problem is, briefly stated, that banks need sufficient regulatory capital in order to be able to absorb potential losses. The culmination point of our research problem would be the research question that has been introduced in the previous chapter. In this case, the research question could be what is the effect of COCOs on the loss absorption capacity of banks? Section 2. Qualitative Aspects We already know that there are a number of academic principles that have to be obeyed in academic research. Specifically, the principle of clarity becomes important while verbalizing a topic. One aspect of clarity is clearness, which demands accurate and academic language or, to be more precise, a clear terminological and linguistic application while formulating a topic. Another aspect of clarity is proper composition, which demands a focus on the topic or, being more precise, a strict focus on the topic to be addressed without any excursions. Clearness implies a careful selection of the terminology while verbalizing a topic.
proper composition implies a careful phrasing of the topic. Section 3. Examples Let's have a look at an example of verbalizing and refining a topic. A student who has a strong interest in marketing decides to submit a proposal for a bachelor thesis. An article in a newspaper directs her interest towards sensory stimuli. She phrases the topic stimuli in marketing. After having given some thoughts about the sensory stimuli, she decides to focus on visual stimuli in marketing. Considering her latest internship in the food industry, she changes the topic of the project to visual stimuli in food marketing. She starts her preliminary research on visual stimuli and adjusts the topic to color design as visual stimuli in food marketing. Since color design can be applied to a variety of product features, she narrows the topic down to color design of semi-transparent packaging materials as visual stimuli in food marketing. The student decides to conduct a number of experiments with test persons in different environments. Therefore, she adjusts the topic to color design of semi-transparent packaging materials in natural and artificial light scenarios as visual stimuli in food marketing. This pyramid demonstrates how a topic in an academic setting can be refined in order to assume a final shape. Of course, the process could be continued. Here is another example of verbalizing and refining a topic. A staff member of a publicly sponsored think tank is in charge of preparing research reports with respect to banks. His team focuses on the financing of banks. More precisely, the refinancing of banks is analyzed by the researchers. Lately, the refinancing of banks' loan portfolios has become a research priority. Our staff member is responsible for the refinancing of banks' real estate loan portfolios. After having discovered a common technique that can be used by banks, the staff member narrows his focus down to refinancing of banks' private real estate loan portfolios with residential mortgage-backed securities, RMBS. Since the emphasis of a publicly sponsored think tank is on actual and potential governmental activities, the topic is changed to Regulatory restrictions for the refinancing of banks' private real estate loan portfolios with residential mortgage-backed securities, RMBS. This pyramid demonstrates how a topic in a professional setting can be refined in order to assume a final shape. Again, the process could be continued. <laughs>